welcome back. Going back to school means an empty house, which might be a welcome change for some parents, but it's also something that our parent, our pets haven't experienced for quite a while. Yeah, a new routine can mean a lot of adjustments and preventing separation anxiety for our furry friends who are holding down the fort at home is easier said than done. That's what we turn to Dr. Mike, veterinarian, and uh, much needed advice coming from you, Dr. Mike. So where do we start with this? Because we know that separation anxiety can really affect our pets. It certainly can, and especially when the house is empty. You know, when there's somebody right. home, if mom's still home or dad's still home, you know, you have that, it's okay, they give more attention. But when the house goes empty, we have to really think about that because some of these dogs start to develop those bad behaviors from being anxious. Right. So, the, you know, I, I always like the interactive toys. I like music, the calming music left behind. The interactive toys like the big Kong toys that you can stuff with a little bit of peanut butter or something that they're gonna, it's gonna keep them busy for a while. Or even a marrow bone, as long as you supervise your dog with a marrow bone, you can put peanut butter in those too and it gives them something to do. And, and then the routines, when you come back, don't be crazy when you leave, don't be crazy when you come back, but give them attention, take them out and exercise them because they still need that exercise. And when the kids are home, they get plenty of it typically. Right. So. Yeah, they keep them busy. So what are some things that we would notice if our pets are starting to suffer from separation anxiety or just anxiety in general? Yeah, they start to chew on things, they start to um, have accidents, they start to have all of those behaviors, whine, howl when you're gone, things like that that you might not know but your neighbors will yeah. and, uh, and they'll certainly <laughs> let you, you know about it. So um, you want to be aware of it. There are things that we can do too. I mean, you can go to extremes. You can put videos in and interactive videos. People have done all of this in my practice it's a, uh, where they share it with us. But the simple things are there's some calming pheromones that we can use, some diffusers you can plug in that are very good at helping to calm the dogs when you're away. And there's a lot of um, interactive things we can do on top of the toys, we can create a nice safe space for them. Yeah. You know, leave some blankets or things that they like, not if they're chewing things, but if sure. things that they like with our sense on it, and just be reassuring, you know, right. let them know, hey, we'll be back, you know, just those words. This is something I didn't even think of, pet-friendly school supplies. I didn't even, didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. What could be dangerous for pets? Yeah, you know, you think about, well, anything that you buy for kids for back to school, yeah. and if you stay with eco-friendly, you're usually not only protecting the environment, you're usually protecting the pets too. Yeah. Yeah. because they're usually safer products. You know, no BPA in the plastics, things that they might be chewing on. Um, some of the erasers and, and paints and things like that for back to school supplies could be dangerous if pets get into them. So we I want was to be thinking maybe it'd be dangerous to leave a, a pen and notebook out and they can start planning an escape. They'll yeah. get too smart. <laughs> That's a pretty good idea. <laughs> but, there, but then there's um, some natural rubber products. You can get natural rubber erasers, things if dogs are chewing on the pencils. I don't know if that happened in your house, but that happened in my house. Yeah. And, uh, and, and just things like that. Yeah. And, and the school bags, you, when you think about the backpacks, every kid now takes backpacks to school and dogs can smell. They have incredible senses of smell. So if there's any food left in, inadvertently, your kids might have gotten a candy bar from right. somebody and they put it in there, that could be dangerous for the dog. Um, we wanna be aware of those things. I wanted to ask you about fall allergies, so I wanna to get to that quickly, but also we've, I've been hearing a lot of questions about the spotted lantern flies. If your pets eat them, is it dangerous? Because it becomes a game for them too sometimes. Yeah, that's a, gr that, that's a great question. So, so they're non-toxic, that's the, the nice thing. But a lot of dogs and cats will get sick because they have chitin, in their insects, and, uh, and it can create irritation in their stomach and then they'll start to vomit. So it's usually GI signs where they start to vomiting. Okay. Yeah, the vomiting, which is not attractive. But they're not toxic, which oh, is that's good. good. Yeah, I know, there's too many of them around. Yeah. And as fall as fall allergies go? Yeah, so this is the worst time of year. So everybody knows when we start, you know, the beginning of the season, spring, it might be mild, summer gets a little worse. Fall is the absolute worst time. So I hate to say this, but in the fall, People that have allergic pets are waiting for five frosts. They can't wait to get out of this allergic season because it's that bad. So know that there's all kinds of things now that we can do for allergies and pets that can make them comfortable again and not make them itch and have trouble breathing throughout this whole season. It's time if they're, if they're really allergic. Fall is the worst season for allergies and pets. Oh, yeah, so it's here. tough. All right, thanks Dr. Mike. You're welcome. Good information. Dr. Mike Hutchinson of Animal General in Cranberry and regular PTL contributor. You can look for him on KDK Radio and on his podcast as well.